like I'm still in shock. Like it's, there's like there's two of me now. There's the person who's talking on camera and on mic about this, and we talked to Vinnie Goodwill, we talked to Bamani Jones, we talked to Ryan Hollins, we talked to Kurt, uh, Tom Haberstro. Next, we're talking to Kurt Healing from Pro Basketball Talk, and then there's the other me who's like, what? in the entire F is going on right now. Like, it's not shocking because, I mean, it makes sense, Kurt, but, like, still, I wonder. So, I think it was around 350, or excuse me, 250 or so, about 250, 250-ish, 250 yeah. 2.5, yeah. 250, when I feel like, I, I don't know, it's hard to track credit nowadays. I feel like it was Shams was the first person I saw tweeted. I'm sure Woj was right behind him in that same time, but point being, where were you? What were you doing? And what was your reaction when you first saw the news? Yeah, I gotten up in the morning. I know hey, it's free agency day, so it's going to be nuts, right? Like this is one of the busiest days of the year. I actually got a bunch of prep done. We we thought we saw everything that was coming, right? Hey, Zach Levine, know what's happening? Bradley Beal, know what's happening? Ooh, big news! Danilo Gallinari may hit the free agent market. Like, mm -hmm. like <laughs> it wasn't seeming like that big a day. So I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? Once we got caught up, I'm like, I'm going to sneak to the gym, get in a little workout because I'm not going to have a lot of time the next couple of days. This is my chance. And I'm sitting there on the rowing machine and I saw Woj first, but whoever it was was first. Yeah. I'm like, holy. <laughs> and I said it out loud at the gym. Yeah. And about four people turned around and looked at me like, what? I'm like, yep, well, this workout's over. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, yeah. <laughs> Grab the towel, walk in the water bottle, and get out the door, man. I read, I read, I read your post this morning on Pro Basketball Talk. It was the uh, the five players to watch in free agency. Yeah. I don't think Durant was among them, if I recall no, correctly. No. <laughs> I know, and it's funny. I wrote the other day. I'm like, the drama isn't over in Brooklyn. Like yeah. I, I, and we talked about. Like, I think they just kicked it down the road, right? Yeah. With with Irving with opting Kyrie, in, yeah. but I, I, I mean Kyrie opting in, but I did not expect. Durant to ask out this fast and everybody I knew people in Brooklyn were kind of like you know what man we just get them all back in a room and we're going to be okay right if we just yeah. get them all if we start winning if we have a good start to the year and Joe Harris is healthy and Durant's out there and Irving's out there and Ben Simmons like it all comes together Simmons. we're going to be fine man yeah that, yeah that's one of the big building around Simmons now what you're rebuilding maybe around Simmons. I mean that's one of maybe. the big that's one of the big things that just like get lost in this is there's this former all star all defensive player just sitting around and just like hey you know this guy's going this way this guy's going that way <laughs> this guy's saying what do you want from me so I was like I, I don't know I don't know what to make of this I'm still processing it but yeah. the first thing I would say for Kevin Durant is good for him you know I think when you look at his career arc and his journey right so there is obviously, and there are plenty of people out there who will never let him live down the fact that he left the team that he lost a 3-1 lead to, that had already won 73 games, won a championship, and went to the finals, and so on and so forth. There are people who will never forgive him for that. For that. There are now people who, even though he helped Golden State reach even greater heights and was a two-time finals MVP, and arguably, as I would, the best player on that team that included Steph Curry. Yeah at the was. time there are people who hold it against him that he left that situation <laughs> it's like oh yeah. look 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 I, what you left behind and went to Brooklyn I don't know that anybody blames him for saying uh-uh even though he's that he's partly at fault for how this didn't materialize and meet expectations yeah. I don't know that anybody sitting there right now saying Kevin that's a punk move like no I would well, I wouldn't want to be attached to Kyrie Irving any longer either if I were him the people who are going to do that would say that no matter what. There is a, a certain segment of the population who, A, really don't like the player empowerment era, right? Like, mm -hmm. don't like these guys having real control over their and, – and LeBron gets this, other guys get this. Where they have – they're exerting their power to control where and when they play and for how much. It, it, the kind of things we all want with our career, but we don't some for some reason like that and – our very, I'm sure you guys have discussed this, this is our very democratic culture and this capitalistic culture. We like our sports to be a little more socialist. Mm -hmm. Like we want it to be a little more balanced and even and every, you know, um, and pretend the little guy has a shot. Durant has upended that. Um, I, I, to me, it's always bugged me to say, hey man, rings matter, winning matters. What matters is putting yourself in the best position to win. Oh wait, no, you can't go to Golden State. Like, no, that makes it too easy. No, it's like, no, you're either in it to win it or you're not. 
I think he looked around. May, I, I, what I'm curious is, did he look at Brooklyn and say, I don't know if we're winning in here. Like, I don't like the way this sets up and I've got to exercise my power now. Or was it frustration with management and how the whole Kyrie Irving thing shook out and a, a sense that they weren't on the same page anymore? I'm, I'm curious what I, I, I would, really my guess would be. This. My guess would be. My guess would be the part two more than part one. I don't know that yeah. Kevin Durant is the type to look around and say we're not going to win because when you have Kevin Durant and presumably Kyrie Irving and, may, and maybe Ben Simmons, you can win, right? Um, I think there was some frustration with management, but I think and you mentioned it earlier about them kicking the can down the road. I think it was really like this is not going to end well. So I'm gonna quit before they fire me. Not not that they would ever fire him, but you know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna get out. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna be the last one on this sinking ship. Because I, because I, I can't control Kyrie. I don't know what Kyrie's gonna do. I don't know what they're gonna do with Kyrie. Kyrie may not be here, so let me get out ahead of this. So it's a smart business move on his part. I, I don't think Kyrie. I don't. I don't think Kyrie was. I, I just couldn't see him. I mean, again, I think the Nets were hoping, hey, if we, if everything comes together and we're winning a lot, Kyrie will re up and be happy playing with Durant. But I don't even think they completely bought that that was happening, right? Like, I don't know I why they that, would want that to happen. Like, and we talked about this. Yeah. I uh, feel like last week. This is the best. We haven't talked about this much. We've talked about how much they are to blame. We've talked about mismanagement or, or you know, functional organizations. But I, I will go back and I, I feel this way. I felt this way then. I told it to you on the show and I'll say it again. This is the best possible outcome for Brooklyn. Because in three years, you have not gotten, you have nothing to show other than a bunch of headlines for this big three experiment. One guy's already got traded. And by the way, contrast how we look at Durant's moves versus Harden's move. Harden is ring chasing too, but we look at Harden as quitting on his teams much more than we look at a, a guy like Durant is quitting on his team. That was just a sidebar. Back to the lecture at hand. Yeah. I'm saying like for Brooklyn, the only thing that can make this better is if somebody ends up trading for Kyrie Irving. And maybe you just take whatever you can get for yeah. Kyrie Irving uh, at this point. Because uh, like if you're Brooklyn, you got nothing to show for it. I don't know that you, forget about how Kevin Durant looks at it. Can we trust that these two guys are going to be on the court for us to win yeah. this year? We got to deal with the Kyrie Irving headache all year, if not next year when he's up for another contract. Do we we still don't want to commit to him long term? Durant's only getting older. Let's cash in these chips now. I'm really bad, Kurt, at getting up from the table at Blackjack. I'm really bad at it. Sometimes <laughs> you got to say, you know what? We're done. We're done here. Yeah, it was a good try. We're done before you in a deeper and deeper hole with both of these guys. By the way, you were on with I heard the pre parts of the previous segment with Bomani, who's by the way, like I love him, like just not a guy I know and still just one of my favorite guys to listen to in the media. No doubt. So thoughtful, but um, you talked about who would take Kyrie Irving. I'll tell you Lakers. Still will take look. He he remains. I don't think they can get Durant. He remains their only path to contention this year. Mm. And but interestingly, take Russ, Russ, it, Russ, it, Russbrook back and play out I that was say, Russ, No, but if if you exactly if you're not trying to, you don't want Russell Westbrook on your team if you're trying to win. It's part of the reason that trade never worked, and you're trying to get a third team and it, it didn't work. If you're not trying to win, and Russ is just a forty-seven million dollar expiring contract. It's a different thing, Ooh, and like the Lakers that. might and they have give a chance. you the picks, and they send picks with it. Yeah, and, and by the way, you can have Talon Horton Tucker, athletic young player. Uh, the Nets, by the way, you know who's, you know who's popping champagne right now, having a few drinks in the office. Joe Sy and Sean Marks. Mm -mm. No, Houston Rockets front office. Oh. You know how many unprotected first round picks they have from Brooklyn coming up that are mm. about to be very, very good picks mm. like that team uh, already with That's right. a promising young great core Jalen. We we're talking to Ryan yeah. Hollins about <laughs> him this, earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this great young core. And by the way, now I got a whole bunch of picks that I can either use and they're not going to be that good this year. And this is there's more franchise guys at the top of this year's draft. And then down the line, I can trade those picks. Those will be valuable, valuable picks to get in the veterans we need to put around the guys we've got. They are set up now to be in a great position in a few years. And, and we'll see. It's easy to say they, hey, they put themselves in the right position. Executing those deals is always another story. We've seen that in every sport. But 
Houston right now is in a brilliant position is right going yet? forward. They are the big winners. Is Not you right yet. That's, 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 on that's the coming. List. That's on the list. Okay, good. Yeah, that's yes. Winners, it's, it's winners and losers. An Houston. List. Yes, exactly. No, um, I'm going to tell you, man, I, lo- I love that point about the Rockets. I mean, they, they, they nailed the last two drafts. Um, yeah. and, and now, you know, they're talking about turning the front upside down and messy Harden divor- divorce is certainly paying big dividends and maybe yeah. even bigger to your point. But back to the Lakers, though, man, I guess when you said it that way, you know what? I mean, and, and we, we do it with processing this in real time. Here goes Kevin Durant hooking up his homeboy one last time out the door because if Kyrie Irving really wanted to get to the Lakers, now, because before, and, and, and um, bear with me, as we were trying to piece this all together, Kurt, it was like, well, if you lose Kyrie, you risk losing Durant. Well, you've already lost Durant. So now yeah. you can move Kyrie for Westbrook, get his expiring contract, do what you want with him or it, get picks back from the Lakers and more, and now you're cooking with gas, and now you're about to clean up with this Kevin Durant trade. If you're Brooklyn, Houston should be your motivation right now. How can we make the yeah. best of a bad situation? And the, they've got because they traded so many picks out to get this super team together. They have really got to do it right. Like they have really got to restockpile their picks and and everything. Um, and I think they sent another one out the door today for Royce O'Neal because yeah. I don't I don't think they were ready for this. Um, and now that's I expect. Royce, I wouldn't be shocked if Royce O'Neal's the type of guy a lot of contenders could use. I wouldn't be shocked if he's moved again down the line. Yeah. Um, there's, I, I think that they, yeah, I think everybody in there, you look, there is real value in trading Joe Harris. There is real value in trading Seth Curry. Like there's good players on this roster now. And if, look, if Durant's gone and Irving's gone, you are, you're in full on rebuild. You are resetting this thing. And, and because you're without picks right now, it's almost like when Sean Marks took over what was then the worst job because they didn't have any picks and how are you going to rebuild this thing? It's almost going to be going back to that and trying to find the Spencer Dinwiddies and the Jared Allens and the Karis Leverts and the guys that they kind of developed. They've got to get, get back to being that team. And I'm not sure, by the way, I don't know that Steve Nash is the coach for that team. You know who would be? Kenny Atkinson. Kenny, oh, oh, yeah. I wonder, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've heard of him. Yes. No, yeah. but I mean, look, we thought the Spurs with the DeJounte Murray trade were like looking at a uh, Victor uh, Wimbanyama. Oh they, oh, they are. Well, right. But I'm saying now they might have some competition with Brooklyn. Brooklyn's there's a clear path to tanking for Brooklyn right now. There's a clear yeah. path to tanking uh, for the 2023 draft if they wanted to. But the but I, I want to kind of last thing before I let you go is kind of like play the domino game with you real quick because how seismic this could be. So Durant could end up with Phoenix with which, you know, alters yeah. the landscape of the Western Conference and the league. He could end up with Miami, which alters the landscape of the Eastern Conference and the league. He could end up with anybody and he makes them a championship favorite, not contender, a championship favorite yep. wherever he ends up. Kyrie, if just following along with your logic, Kyrie, maybe this fast tracks him to the Lakers. How seismic is that? Because all right, say what you want yeah. about Anthony Davis's dependability and availability and Kyrie Irving's dependability and availability. I will take my chance with LeBron AD and Kyrie Irving. What are some other dominoes in free agency? Not that anybody else really matters at this point, but any some other dominoes off the top of your head that you could think of in free agency that could now be affected our because te- every team is now presumably locked in on. Wait, can we get in on this? Can we put together yeah, a package? Yeah, exactly. Are we attractive enough to Kevin Durant to maybe pry him out of Brooklyn? Like, can, can, who else? Because yeah. free agency was kind of going to be boring. I mean, Harden was opting out to opt back in for a cheaper price. Levine was going to, you know, stay stay there. Beal, I mean, is, does Beal rethink this now? Does Beal say, wait a minute, KD, what's up to partner? What's going on? You up? Yeah. Like, is Beal definitely going to go back to DC now? I mean, like, how else can this just completely I, alter the landscape of the NBA as we know it? Or as we thought the we difference with the difference between Beal and frankly Zach Levine in this case is Kevin Durant grabbed the bag and he's like taking that big traveling contract with him wherever he goes. I, I still think Beal takes that contract, but he's run into the front office right now going, Hey, and Kristaps Porzingis, Rui Hachimura, everybody, everybody on this team, see what you can do. And I think this this happens now. There's 29 front offices 
sitting around trying to figure out, hey, how do we get on this? Do the Clippers have a lot of movable pieces? Ooh. They weren't willing to do it for Kyrie Irving, but that the becomes... Clippers. And by the way, if it puts them way into the tax... Um, Bomber hi, don't Steve care. Bomber. They don't care. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. I, um, even down to, like, if I'm the Utah Jazz, I don't think I'm getting it. But you know what I'm going to do? Rudy Gobert and picks and a package. And, hey, let's see. Now, I, I don't think that works. I would want – I I'm not rebuilding around Rudy Gobert in four years at $140 million, But I, Utah's making that call. 29 other teams, Charlotte's going to make a call. Do the Every Clippers team's have, going to make a call. I, I'm, I'm still stuck on the Clippers. They got any picks to send? They got any – or is it just the, the They got a players? few of their own. I'd have to I'd okay. have to look it up. I know that they've got some picks, but what they've also that's got – That's not a deal break. That's not a deal break, I guess. Yeah, but what they've also – what they've set themselves up to do well that – that team down the hall failed at and is why they don't have Kyrie Irving right now is they've given themselves a lot of financial flexibility with the Marcus Morris, Luke Kennard style contracts in the teens. Mm -hmm. So I can package together, I can easily package together a kind of interesting group that if you're the Nets, you may flip and get you like, I might, I might get Morris and then flip him to a contender down the line and get other picks or young players or whatever but they can put together a package really quickly. And I, they do have some picks and they've got some promise. Hey, you like Trey Mann? You like any of our yeah. of our nice young players? We'll throw it in. There's nothing on the table. And that is a, I'll just, I'll say, I think the Clippers are one of the smartest front offices out there. So you Agreed. know they're putting something together. Last, last thing. I say last thing, but you know, it is, oh, wait, no, for real, yeah. for real this time. Do the warrior, does a Warriors reunion make sense for A, the Warriors and B, Kevin Durant. We know they got pieces that could make that could be attractive to Brooklyn. They got they got some young players. Yeah. That could, but does it make yeah. sense for either side or both? I look if I think if I'm Brooklyn, I would love to get some of those young pieces and some picks, right? Like I would love to get. I think I think Kumingas can be very good if I can get Moody and Poole and some of that. Then yeah, um, I I think from Brooklyn's end it'd be interesting. A, how does Durant feel about that? Like, I, I'm not even going to try to guess. I, my, my thought is that he doesn't really care what everybody else thinks, so he might be up to it. But the other part of that is the ownership and management in Golden State who have prided themselves on how mm -hmm. the, they've walked the line, right? Like, hey, yeah, the, the Curry, I mean, we, we've still got a few years and we could still win a title or two with the, the Curry-Thompson-Green era, but we've we've transitioned ourselves with coming at everybody else. We're going to be able to step up, and we're going to have money, and we're going to be we're going to be right. able to not take a big step back. If you bring in Durant, you are all in for a couple of years, and you're back to potentially being those right unassailable warriors. But it, yeah, I, Bumani and you guys were talking about this. Durant's 34 with an Achilles. Like you've got a few years of this, and then you're way down to rebuilding it. You got I don't the, know if you got the best of both that. worlds. No, you don't. You don't. You got the best of both yeah. worlds uh, because. You can, you are winning now. It's not an either or. Like for most teams, it's like, mm, yeah. do we, I, you know, we talk about it with Atlanta, for example. Atlanta's going all in on yeah. winning now. You know, they, they flip their picks yeah. for DeJounte Murray. They're winning now. Go to say, it's like, no, we're winning now. We just won a championship and we're going to win later. So there's no reason yeah. to, for, to mortgage our future. We, we, we probably will be better next year than we were this year and still have an yeah. opportunity to make moves in free agency. Yo, Kurt, thanks for the. Last minute uh, call, man. We appreciate you being available. Uh, I'll be reading. Um, talk to you tomorrow. I'm sure we'll. Have yeah, I, I will be back tomorrow, and uh, I will look more frazzled. I'd say my hair would look worse, but. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this is supposed to be a one-hour show, and uh, I was like, "Damn, that we ain't even scratched the surface yet. We still got. We still got. I'm sure there's plenty more to talk about tomorrow that we ain't even get thought of yet. Appreciate you. Yeah, I'm sure. Take care, man. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.